Time for another reading from my the first book of my Through the Passageway series. I hope you enjoy. It was dark in the forest, but somehow Abigail found it quite easy to see. She looked around and saw that the trees were sturdy and strong and varied in kind. The trunks of the trees, although different in height and weight, were all the same shade of brown. The leaves, on the other hand, were a rainbow of every shade of green, creating a dappled canopy above them. The ground beneath her feet was covered in soft, mossy grass with large mushrooms sticking up here and there. And there were the most beautiful wildflowers all around, something Abigail found a bit surprising in the dark forest. Still, it was beautiful. There were bluebells that changed the hue of their colour depending on the light, coney flowers with their long droopy petals, marsh marigolds the colour of the sun, wild lilies in a variety of different colours, and those were just the flowers that Abigail recognised. The bright petals brought a lightness to the otherwise plain green place. In some places, the moss crawled up from the ground along the bark of the tree trunks, but never quite made it to the top. Along the trunks, the moss was intertwined with those vines that weren't hanging from the canopy above, but that had instead embedded themselves into the trunks of the trees. The forest was alive with the sounds of the creatures who lived among the trees and the underbrush. Bird calls fluttered through the air, mixing with the buzzing of the strangest flying bugs Abigail had ever seen. The bugs had round bodies covered in red fur and black transparent wings. Their small buggy heads had no apparent facial features, none that Abigail could see anyway. The fuzzy bugs flew around her, hovering in front of her every so often, attracted to her scent. When a particularly curious bug hovered right before her nose, she reached out her hand, but before her fingers could contact with its furry body, her father pulled her hand away. You don't want to do that, they bite, he told her in response to her questioning look. But they look so cute and friendly, she said, gazing back at one of the bugs hovering next to her. At that moment, the flying bug bared a smile full of tiny black fangs and hissed at her before flying away through the trees and disappearing. Abigail recoiled from the tiny creature, but stared after it in wonder for a few moments before continuing on along the path after her parents. The deeper they trekked into the forest, the more dense the foliage became. Yet through the canopy above them, shafts of sunlight, sunlight managed to break through, dimly illuminating the forest. Crickets chirped and owls hooted as they swooped overhead. There was also a number of animals crawling through the undergrowth of the forest and that Abigail managed to glimpse out of the corner of her eye. There was a calmness within the forest that the family of three had never felt in their village. Being hidden away amongst the trees was a welcome comfort, but even with this feeling of safety away from the king's rule, Abigail wasn't excited about being here all by herself. In fact, the thought of the loneliness terrified her. She had never been away from her parents or her friends before, and she didn't know how she would make it on her own. When her new home came into view, she momentarily forgot about her fear. She looked around from the top of the slight slope upon which they stood and saw that the forest opened out into a small clearing where her little cabin stood. It was like the cabin was meant to be built in that exact spot. It looked to Abigail like the trees had purposely moved out of the way to let Bill and the other men build it. They did a good job, Abigail thought to herself. They had built a quaint one-story cabin with two windows on either side of the front door and a small porch that ran the length of the front of the house. The window boxes sitting in the window sills had flowers planted in them to give the outside of the cabin a little colour. The wood from which the cabin was built was the same colour as the trees around it, making it blend into the forest. The cottage looked lovely from afar, but the feeling of terrified loneliness returned to the pit of Abigail's stomach 
as they stroll toward the cabin. But I don't want to be here by myself. It's scary. Abigail was frightened by the idea of living in the forest by herself without either one of her parents. Her lip began to quiver as she stood outside her new house with her parents. Abby, there is no need to be scared of this forest, Mary said lovingly, kneeling down in front of her daughter. She spoke, spoke with such tranquility that a great calmness seemed to settle over Abigail. It's said that this forest is enchanted, said Bill, and he took Abigail by the hand and led her into the cabin before launching into a story. The trees in this forest are no ordinary trees. They are living creatures like you and I, and they seek to protect good from evil and hide whoever wishes to take refuge between their roots. So don't you fret, my little birdie. You are the safest place there is, Bill told her, using the nickname he had given his daughter shortly after she was born. But Dad, that's not real. It's just a story, Abby said in a whisper. She dared not speak any louder, feeling a bit spooked in such a dark, eerie place. Bill sat on a wooden rocking chair and embraced Abigail in a hefty bear hug while Mary went about lighting a fire and placing some lighted candles around the dimming cabin. The cabin was split into two small rooms, the main room that served as the kitchen and living room and a smaller private room that would be Abigail's bedroom. The mattress in the small bedroom was made out of anything uniquely soft that the forest floor had provided, making for a rather comfy bed, complete with a pillow and a warm woolly blanket. Later that night, as they wandered through the pitch black of the forest by the light of a small candle lit lamp, Bill and Mary couldn't help but feel heartbroken about leaving their daughter in her forested solitude. Do you think she'll be all right in that cabin all by herself? Asked Mary, looking up into her husband's eyes. Being a mother meant she'd worry about her daughter under any circumstance. Trying to stay positive, Bill said, of course she will. We'll visit often. She'll never feel completely alone.